always desired but never loved all the way through. If that is the first thing a man says while you are walking down the aisle and says, body, are you joking? <laughs> we have prayer. Pray to God. Guys, all in all, I'm saying leave men alone. Like, I think that's the conclusion. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you do not know me, I am Anemi Kua and welcome to my, you know, beauty lifestyle vlogging page. Today, I am bringing you guys something new, something, you know, out of the box. I am doing an unbunking and giving you my raw opinion on the Love is Blind um, season just before the reunion so you can tell me your thoughts before we head to the reunion but guys this is raw and we are going to be talking about being la desired but not loved all the way we all know that quote and i am hoping that you guys enjoy this video please do not forget to comment like and subscribe to my channel and also enjoy while you see me doing this beautiful face hey guys so my camera cuts but um i started using um the revlon my go-to revlon rose glow illuminating primer and then i went in with This L'Oreal Inflammable um, Foundation, and I'm just I just went in with that. As you can see, stippling motions, just like that. So let us get into the purpose of this video while you guys watch me do my makeup. So let us get into the nitty gritty, the main characters of the season and you know i thought season six was you know gonna be something gonna give us something and what it gave us is that it needs to be banned the show needs to close down like love is blind needs to pay for their crimes like because wow like season one was where love is blind showed that it is that love is blind and then as the seasons go by you know there are couples here and there that are still together but you know it wasn't the way that we had all anticipated it to be you know but i mean i love the drama you love the you love the drama everybody loves drama love is blind is literally oprah saying you get drama, you get drama, and everybody gets drama because no one knows peace on that show. And the producers know, know how to get you talking. Was, oof, I'm, my skin is itching. My skin is itching to speak. To speak about them because, wow, my girl AD really played herself. You know, she she definitely gives, I will build my man from the ground up and I don't care what anybody says type of woman. And, you know, men are very smart. They can sense you will ride for them through whatever. And, you know, AD is the always desired but never loved all the way through because she's a beautiful woman with a, an amazing oh guys i think we need a whole segment on this youtube channel to speak about ad's body because what clay said while she was walking down the aisle was body you know but also why didn't she turn back can we please speak about that is that why didn't she turn back because if that is the first thing a man says while you are walking down the aisle and says, body, are you joking? <laughs> I, I, I cringed. But anyways, Clay was just a man who made us believe, he really made us believe that 
he never found love on the outside. Like he tried to make us believe that he didn't get women, he didn't have serious relationships, and that he's never tried to be in a relationship, and hence why he came on Lovers Blind because he was having trouble on the outside. And Shane, he really sold us a dream because he is a good looking man, you know, who is you G he's smooth. So why wouldn't, but anyways, fine. So he made us believe that. And he also made AD believe that. He sold AD so many dreams and my girl really believed him, you know, and I don't, I don't blame her. You know, you have to go on the show with an open mind, I guess. And, you know, you expect to be love bombed when you go onto that show. But I mean, she just overdid it because she just expected a lot from someone who wasn't on the show to get married because he said he wasn't a hundred percent um ready to get married but the purpose of the show is at the end of it when you find that someone you will get married so for him to say that it really showed his intentions that he was really on there to kind of get clout a bit, you know, and find, you know, and hopefully, you know, find a, a long-term girlfriend to put up with his nonsense, you know. And it kind of shows, I think the whole clay situation kind of shows how being too transparent with your kids, like, they end up, being those people in their actual lives. And as you can see with Clay and his dad, like that dad has serious issues because why would you take your son with you to go visit your mistresses? Like, <laughs> like in your brain, you know, like it was just so odd for me. And for also for, for Clay to be that transparent about his parents' marriage, on the show was just something else. Okay, I'm blending out. Was just something else for me, you know? But hey, we are moving on from that. So um, with Clay, um, he's just, you know, a man who will still play with you and he is still in his playing era. He will, he is not in the position to get married and AD should just let go of him. But I know AD will not let go of him because she is a bolder man and she will build you and she will stick around, you know, and I hope that one day she does find what she's looking for because she is a great woman, you know, but you know, she's just looking in the wrong places. Moving on with Chelsea, Jeremy, Trevor, that whole square. Jess, yes, Jess. First of all, as soon as Chelsea walked down when she, when they first saw each other after, Jeremy proposed, that man knew he was not going to get married to her. That man knew. And I also think the only reason why he chose her was because of the whole Megan Fox thing. And <laughs> like, girl, I, I think she is fooling herself by saying she looks like Megan Fox. But hey, I, I see it. Maybe like if you like blink really fast, you will definitely see it. Like, no, sh no shade to my girl, Chelsea. But, like, with Jimmy, he knew he was not going to get married to that poor girl. And, you know, like, he made so many excuses. I think he would have been the person that Chelsea Chelsea wanted him to be to someone else. He was just, he just didn't want to do it. 
with her. He didn't want to be the person that Chelsea wanted with Chelsea. Um, yeah, and that's literally the, like, that's that. As soon as that man saw that girl, he knew exactly Uguti. Hey, she is not my type, but obviously since we are here, I'm going to try convince myself because he kept saying, oh my God, I'm thrilled. I think we're the most happiest couple here. I think we're happier than so-and-so. I think we're doing better than so-and-so. See that Chelsea was asking for too much. Not, not for too much. She, she is a normal woman for asking what she asked, but she was just asking that to the wrong man because he wasn't ready to do all of that for her. He wasn't ready to appreciate all she does. But she just whines so much. She cries over so many unnecessary things. And, you know, like, my girl needs to get a grip. My girl Chelsea needs, I don't know what she needs, but she needs something. She needs something. As a woman, uh, with and you are with a man that you you know you love you care about, and for him to then just go ahead and say you are clingy like those words are just and they are painful like they are so painful because it's like you are trying with all your heart all your might you know, to bring each other closer, especially because this um, this is not what normal people do. It's For me, it's just giving desperate. It's giving, I'm on the show to look for clouds. It's not that I'm running out of options in the real world. Guys, pray. We have prayer. Pray to God. Because I can guarantee you, it's like, it's unlikely for you to meet the love of your life, your soulmate, on a dating show. Especially these type of dating shows that are made to kind of trick you into thinking you are going to find love. But honestly, it just makes great TV because you guys look a stupid and nice word or a bad word, but you guys kind of look desperate. You guys kind of look out of place because you're just doing too much just, you know, to have like a life partner. But most of the time at the end of the day, all you just get is trauma. That's for most people. You know, it's for clouds. Like, you cannot tell me that half of those people are ready to get married. You cannot tell me half of those people are, like, in in it to witness with the love of their lives, you know? And with Jimmy, I just think he was just so disappointed on how Chelsea looked. And then after that, everything kind of just became cringy towards him. And with Chelsea, I think she just has a screwed up idea of how relationships are supposed to be. And I mean, it's okay to kind of ask if someone's in love with you still, especially because you guys were so rushed into this whole process. You know, nothing kind of makes sense. So I do get it, like constantly worrying, needing reassurance and Jimmy was supposed to do that for my girl, Chelsea. Like, he was really supposed to be there for her. Like, it's the same thing with Brittany and Kenneth. Um, I hated that every time, like, obviously when Chelsea, I mean, when Brittany was feeling kind of low and insecure about the relationship and how she doesn't feel loved, etc. Like, with Jimmy and Kenneth, they constantly be like, why do I have to... Um, constantly remind you that I love you. I chose you. This and this. And it's like, I just think that's not enough, especially at this stage of your relationships. Like, 
it's really like not enough. You need to reassure these people like every single day to be intentional about how you show up for them. And they literally failed. Like this season, the, the, the men really failed in showing their love and constantly reassuring these women, you know, and it's so unfair for them to kind of gaslight these women to saying like, why do I have to, like, you are being too much, you are being too clinky, you are asking for too much, like, you know, and what is up with Kenneth and that damn phone? I get like, Brittany said that she doesn't have a problem with it and that wasn't her problem, but I just think like, he just was getting bored of her. And even when they went on the dates, on the boats, like that was such a pretty date, a fun date. And all they could do is just stay at the distance, stare at the water and say, oh, that's, and that's all they could speak about. And that's all they could talk about at that time. And, you know, I just don't think they're it for each other. And I know you guys are bashing AD for like, oh, AD, um, about after having that talk with Kenneth, he kind of had his reservations about being with Brittany because it's his first interracial relationship. And, um, you know, like he's worried if she could be able to raise black children. And I mean, I don't think that's, I mean, I get the concerns, but I think he just cared about what people said or what people would say, or what his family would say, way too much. And it's like, you knew coming onto the show that you could potentially meet like anyone in any race, and you couldn't just like think about that. And obviously, you won't see these people face to face. So at the back of your mind, you have to think, hey, I might end up with um, another woman, you know, of a different race. So for him, I just feel like he was using that excuse to kind of backtrack from her and, you know, and, you know, obviously these rumors of him being, you know, playing for the other team, (laughs) um, I have no comments. Like, I, I... have nothing else to say about Kenneth because he was just gaslighting. He was not listening to her concerns. He was just everything that a woman did not need at that stage. And he was just horrible. Like he was horrible. I don't know. Like, and he just, he's the one who kind of took a 360 turn. Hence why I'm like, he was horrible to that extent because he just took a 360 turn. Like you, you, like the whole time he was this genuine soft guy, a principal, you know, this, you know, loving guy that you'd never think. But I think those are the worst men ever. I think you must just show me a red flag. But to keep it in till that long and then to kind of just break her heart like that and watch her cry. Like he literally watched her cry and said, are you good? And proceeded to call whoever he called. I mean, it didn't sound like, you know, just a friend to say, pick me up right then and there. No comforting, no nothing. That was just heartless. Johnny and Amy. Johnny and Amy are the right amount of quirky, cringy, fun, loving, you know, it just works, like, they work so much, and, like, I love them so much, like, I love them so much, you know, but, I mean, the red flag of it, they constantly spoke about, well, Johnny constantly spoke about, oh, no, he doesn't want, you know, the SEX, you know, 
aspect of the relationship because she is not on birth control. But I mean, are condoms not available? Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying because like he made it seem like, oh no, like there is nothing else available, and you know, her being pregnant is just, you, you know, and I understand his concerns because he seems to not be ready for that and it's understandable but I mean the way he said it it's as if like that was not an option but anyways other than that they're so great let us get into Jeremy and Laura because <sighs> I honestly don't know what to say more about Jeremy because yeah, Jeremy, because he is the worst kind of man you can kind of get. Because someone who can lie to you, like, to that extent, and kind of make you look or seem dumb, and gaslight you into and like be so defensive to the point and like he knows you know but he's trying to try his luck he is trying to try his luck of hey maybe I can get away with this but one thing I love about Laura in this season specifically out of all the girls is that she stood on business that girl stood on business she is like you will not take me for a ride and laura was not ready to settle for an emotionally immature person who was not ready to settle down and you know she didn't force him like most of these women this season she didn't force him to kind of be like hey you do this instead she just chose to be like honestly it is too early for us to be going through i mean actually it wasn't even too early it was a perfect time because people show you very very early in the relationship what type of people they will be throughout the relationship you know so for me that was gold for me like she really stood up business and I love that about her. Okay. Okay, so I just finished doing my, putting on my lashes and my under eye. Next, I'm going to put blush. This blush. Guys, all in all, I'm saying leave men alone. Like, I think that's the conclusion that we can have today that, that we can all be satisfied with at this point and that love is blind should pay for its crimes like nothing good came out of this besides Johnny and Amy and obviously they were a match made in heaven but other than that we, we shall see what will happen at the reunion. We shall see who got back with whom. We shall see who's given whom a chance again. And I mean, my predictions are, is that Chelsea and Jimmy are going to get back together. AD will stick by Clay. And Sarah Ann and Jeremy are obviously still continuing whatever they were doing during the Love is Blind season. And that, that, that's literally my predictions. And then you're going to get Kenneth, who is going to sound like a victim. And he, I can guarantee you, I will give you every one of my subscribers a hundred rand to bet that K 
Kenneth will play victim. He will like twist this whole thing and blame it on production, blame it on everyone else but him just being a horrible person. Yep, and that's just me guys. And that is just me. Okay, I'm putting on this um, Superstay Maybelline powder underneath my eye to kind of brighten them up because I love a bright under eye. But yeah, those are my predictions for the reunion. If you have any thoughts, guys, on, you know, and debunking your own opinion in the comments or if you feel like I misread a situation, you know, you can comment down below and tell me what's up. Like, this is an interactive community. We can do that. And I know you all watch Love is Blind. So, come on. Give it to me. Give it to me. We all have, we always have thoughts and opinions. Let's have thoughts and opinions underneath my comments. Thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, that is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed watching me do my makeup while I talk about Love is Blind. And if you guys want me to continue doing things like this or potentially create a series about me doing things like this, interactive speaking while doing my makeup and then obviously do other things, guys, please let me know in my comments below. Please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. And thank you so much for coming back. Bye.